I have not. Your handlers are looking after you the best they can. We are putting. Earlier this year, that you would not affect the pensioners. It wouldn't be any effect on your pension. And we've written a letter to tell you just that, that your no. pension will never reduce. Yeah. Well, yeah, but our cost of living is part of our pension. Your cost of living is continuing. Your cost of living is The plan is funded to return at least 75%, and then it has a formula to go higher. If the cost of living is actually higher, the returns will be higher, it will get 100%. We're giving up the goal. So how, what can you plan to do? Because of the way we fund it? The, the model, yeah, if, if you really look at how the model is structured, it's, it is overfunded. It's funded to go, so immediately to 150% overfunded. Currently it's at like 85 or 90. The, the, before any changes can be made to it, it has to hit a threshold of 140% overfunded. And then the changes have a built-in protection of a 10-year uh, indexing protection clause that says we have to build that kind of reserve in it so we can ensure that the, coal, the, uh, coal, uh, the cost of living is actually paid. So uh, how much of a cut are you taking? Same process. We're doing the very same thing with the MLS. On top of the one-third being put in the legislation. Yep, very same. We lobbed one-third off the top, and we will move the share to this as well. So leading by example. <laughs> Well, you should. I, I really would, would like uh, you know an opportunity for you to see the numbers, see how it works. I mean, your actuary went through them in great detail. Uh, the the plan is very secure and it's very focused to pay out the cost of living. The only difference is that it pays it when it can afford to pay pay it. It's funded to pay at least seventy five percent. That's that's the way it's structured. Well, that's not the way when you're my pension, I take home my pension after thirty six years, fourteen thousand three hundred. And you'll it's continue to take home at least that. Yeah, sure. Big deal. And it'll grow with the cost of living. <laughs> no. So why do you feel it's not cost of living? Well, I just don't think you will. It's there when the market doesn't have But the letter, no, no, we do have to. That's how it's funded. And the letter was very clear on that. We do have to. We're committed to that. I believe what I'm saying. So, so in a minute or less, what's the Hi, message? Charles. How are you doing? What's the message? A minute. We are less. building a pension for the future, one that can be there for current pensioners, for current employees, and future employees. It'll be sustainable, affordable, and fair to taxpayers, to the to the employees, what they pay contributions, and to the previous pensioners who who plan on it being there for their full retirement. What do you say to the pensioners that say they don't trust you? Well, I guess, uh, you know, what do you say to that? It, 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 it's Personally, I feel very bad about that because uh, through this whole process, the whole goal has been trying to get this province in a sustainable path forward, which it, is, which it hasn't been. And, you know, we can all talk about the difficulties in, in doing that, and we hear all kinds of reasons why we can do nothing. You know, we spent 45 minutes in here in question period. There wasn't one question on pension reform. And that's because the leaders of the opposition realize we have to deal with it. We have to move forward with it. Yes, we can all ignore it. We can all just say it's not my problem. This party under, under David Allard has said we're not going to ignore it. We're going to deal with this for the future. We're going to fix New Brunswick one, for the future. One more question. What's the difference between the situation in Greece and here? <laughs> we're not quite to Greece yet. And we don't want to be there. Be there right. <laughs> that's why we're doing this? Well, this and many other things. It's why. No, no. I need to find um a good friend of mine, and he, and he had a couple of questions on there. Uh, yes, how's the um, this uh, cost of living? I got your letter, and my concern was the question was over a 20-year period. Um, when is if there's a deficiency in the cost of living in the early part of that 20-year period? At what point does it kick in and the deficiency be made up? So the way it's structured, every year you, you would get um, a cost of living based on the returns of the plan. That's going to be on an annual basis? That's an annual basis. Just the same as you get today. In fact, that wasn't clear. Okay, well, I have my apologies for that. But that is the case. Every year you get a cost of living. And right, right today, if um, if you look at the system right now, you'll get more, I think, more of a cost of living than you would have last year. Because this isn't capped. You're capped that if the, if the growth is actually under 1%, I don't think you get a cost of living. Well, in this one, you get 1%. 
because it doesn't have that. And it's not capping the other end either. So if, if we get a better return to the cost of living is 3% or 4%,